I, I did it, and I'm impressed. Like that is, it's, it's, it goes from cool beat, thanks, to oh, this sounds like a record. Let me rap on. Peace, my name is Paul Willie Green Womack. Uh, we're here at The Greenhouse, part of Brooklyn Recording Paradise here in Brooklyn, New York. And we're gonna take a look at Split EQ today and some techniques for working with multi-tracks and two-track beats and see just how powerful this new EQ is. My sampling technique is very choppy. I'm kind of old school where I like my sample chops to sound like sample chops and not just like a loop. You know, if I just want a guitar loop, I'll get a guitar player. But I want that sound of the sample being manipulated. Um, so a lot goes into the process of making it sound right. And there used to be a lot of things that were kind of unsampleable. Uh, things with a lot of bass limit how I can write a bass line to the track. Um, so using Split EQ allows me to reduce the bass line while still keeping the drums. If I want the kick drum in there to go with what I'm programming, I can keep the drums, reduce the bass line, and then create my own thing. So Split EQ gives me a lot of flexibility to make space in what might be a busy sample. You know, there's such a wide range of how producers work nowadays, and producers do so much work on the front end before I get files to mix. And so a lot of times I do just get a two track of the beat. The producer got it to where they wanted to get it. And so they're like, this is it, I'm locking it in. But sonically, I might have to do some tweaking or some improving or clearing out to make it work with the full song. Um, so Split has just been an amazing tool for working with two tracks because I can reach in and bring out a little bit of the strings or I can push that organ part back a little bit because it's right in that same frequency range that I need for the vocal. Um, so while it's super powerful on instru individual instruments, it's a tool that I just haven't had that level of power and, and detail to work with a two track where a two track is not an impediment anymore because I can reach in and get whatever I need out of it very easily. All right, so I got a beat here that I made. I've got some multi-tracks and also a two-track of it. And I'm gonna show some of the different applications of Split EQ and how you can really fine tune and refine your sounds to what you're looking for. Uh, so we'll play a little bit here just so you can kind of see what's happening. All right, so pretty basic beat, you know, we've got kick, snare, hats, another snare drum that I kind of manipulated a bit, bass, string sample, and a synth pad. So standard things that you would find in a beat, um, but all of them have their own little problems and challenges, so how do we get them to work together? Uh, let's start with the drums, because I generally start with the drums, that's the kind of person I am. And particularly with the hi-hats, uh, which is can be a challenge for a lot of people. Um, a lot of modern hip-hop is very hi-hat focused, which means your hi-hats have to be right. Um, so dry, right out of the box, this is what the hi-hats sound like. So 
So I like the pattern, but it kind of sounds like spare change in a soda can. So we got to tighten that up. Um, not quite trap hi-hats, but they have some of those faster tendencies. So we don't want a really long tail on them. We want to be pretty short and precise so they're not clouding up our whole top end. Uh, so split EQ lets us do that in a few different ways to really tighten them. First, I'm using a high-pass filter just on the tonal side, and I'm cranking that thing all the way up really to 5K. Uh, I want this short, sharp, uh, sharp attack from the, from the transients and a little bit of body, so it doesn't sound like, I don't know, insects crawling or whatever, but I don't want it to stretch out too long because the high end of the strings is there and I need to leave that open for that definition. So we'll roll that off here. I'm gonna turn this band off and let's hear what the hi-hat sound. And bypassed. Yeah, that's so much longer. There's so much more hi-hat in there than we need. So here again, that's bypassed. And this is with it in. All right, so we're tightened up. But I want a little bit more of the attack. I want it really just to kind of really just tick there. So on band five here, way up at 10K, I'm adding a peak on the transient side just to kind of push that, the definition of that. So let's hear that. and bypassed. And back in. So it's just enough just to give me a little more definition there. And then finally, I'm reducing the tonal side on the master tonal gain a little bit, just down about four and a half dB, just to accentuate one more time, give me a little bit more of that definition, because uh, there's a lot of other rhythmic elements at play. So this is with that at zero. There you go. All right, so we still get a little bit too much of that length, and then we just roll that down. And that's nice and tight, that's nice and crispy. All right, so that's really, fit, that's really fitting in there nice. So that's sounding great. I'm a, I'm a drummer and I grew up in marching bands. So you find a lot of my beats, I've got marching snares and that kind of stuff in there. Um, and I wanted that vibe, but with this hi-hat pattern, which is the more important of the two elements here, doing a lot of that work on the top end, I wanted to imply the marching snare, but not go crazy with it. So I'll turn off this cool delay I have on here first. Um, and I do some surgery here. What I've done is a little bit of the opposite. I want more of the tonality from that marching snare to come through and less of the sharp transients because I don't want that to interplay with the transients from my hi-hat. Bypass, this is what that snare sounds like. Pretty marchy. It's a whole lot for this track. We don't need quite that much. This is it in context. Exactly, like that's, we don't need to hear that much of that anymore. Uh, but let's bring in Split EQ, and now, what I've been able to do is push that back. With Split EQ, you can start getting more into 3D because you can adjust your transients, which is gonna make it feel like you're pushing it back further and you're just getting the tone of it, as opposed to being right in your ear, which was very annoying a second ago. So what I've done again, I've rolled down the master gain now on the transient side, and I've done a big dip on the transients on the high end with the shelf. Um, and I brought down a bit on the tonal just so it wasn't going too crazy up top, but I wanted to take down the crack of that snare and leave some of the body. And so I've got a little bit of a hump here uh, in the tonal and I'm notching now where the lower part of that attack would be in the transient here on band two. Just brought that down. 
Um, and that gives me less of the thud there, um, but the still full drum sound. So let's A, B that. Bypass. So I'll bypass band six. That's what's doing the most work here. And we'll hear how it just kind of eases off, shaves down those sharp edges on the top. Like that's so freaking cool. It just moved the drum like 50 feet back. Now the snare drum is on the 50 yard line, not right in the end zone with us. So we're just pushing that back. And it's just the depth of field is just crazy because it just now gave me a 3D view on it. Um, let's see what the effect on band two is real quick. So you hear that do, 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 do. That's not what we're looking for, so. It's pretty subtle, um, but it does just enough because we have other things happening in that space. I'm going to bring our string track back in, which is our main melodic sample here. And now I'm going to bring in that second, that, that second band and we'll see the space that that makes there. So this is without that second band activated. So that peak right there around 200, that's where the cellos are kind of living. So I want, this is not a marching snare song, this is the string sample is the main thing, so we're gonna get that part out of the way. So it has a dual effect. It gives the strings space to breathe, and it actually, by cutting out that tubby low end in the snare, makes the snare feel brighter, but without having to have all that bright attack on top. So I can roll that attack off and then keep it feeling bright and light by bringing down the attack in the lower, in, in the lower mids. Um, so that puts that snare right, right where I want it. Uh, let's hear that in context now. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Uh, and then I got a little delay on it, H3000, you know, that's always got the sauce, so we can put that on for a little bit of pizzazz. Without. Like, that's all right. That. That's where it's at. That's where it's at. Um, but like we said, the string sample here is the main is the main thing. So let's take a look at how we're using split EQ on that to really bring out the life in them. Um, you know, string loop sounds nice off the jump. Let me bypass. This is what we're looking at. Just out of the box. This is how. So that's cool, it's nice, I chose it because it sounds cool, that's the whole idea. Um, but it sounds a, just a little bit in the box, or I want a little bit of life, a little bit more out of it. So um, taking it pretty easy, I don't have to do a lot, but a little goes a long way. I want a little more strike and attack on the top end of the strings. When everything comes in, we got marching drums and other stuff, I want 
I want the the top end of that to really kind of come through the uh, 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 and the and, and the string sound. Like that's what makes string sound dope is that rub of the bow on the strings, right? So at about five k. I'm using the transient side, and I'm just bringing that up just to get a little bit of that sharpness, right? And then above that, I'm using um, the tonal side. This is one of my favorite moves with Split EQ. On the tonal side, way up top, above 10K, if you boost that, the tonality there, what you're getting is the air around what's happening. And even with the sample... I don't know if these were recorded. These, these might have been recorded live or with a very good library, but there's air there to be brought out. You know, in a vocal, if you want your vocal bright and airy but not sibilant, this is the move. You boost the tonal side up top and you're getting the space around it, but you're not bringing out the really sharp stuff that slices your ears there. So let's A, B. This is bypassed. Yeah, that makes me smile. It just kind of lifts it up a little bit, you know. It puts it gives them in, it puts them in a little bit of space. I got a little reverb on them, um, but just lifts it and kind of opens opens them wide. And with that, what we can also do, what I like to do, is there is a panning section in Split EQ, which is super powerful. If you got a sample where you know, like in early stereo days, you'd have stuff panned all wild. You'd have the bass on the right and the orchestra on the left and stuff like that. And it's kind of weird. We got away from that, thankfully. Um, but if you need to narrow and specifically, often you want to narrow your low end, right? Especially if you're making records that are going to vinyl, too much low end and subsonic information on the sides is going to be problematic. And it's going to really have an effect on how your vinyl is cut. But you can use the panning. You can use the panning section to narrow things. Or if I isolate the snare and I want to throw it off to the left, like I'm making a '60s record, I can grab that band and I can pan that to the side. So you can pan independently the tonal and the transient. You can narrow things. It's pretty wild, actually. So with the air on top, I brought the air in. But let's really spread it out. Let's let's let's, let's make some room here. That's really cool. I don't know if you heard that, but the violins, actually the top of them actually shifted a bit to the left, which in an orchestra is where the violins are. So just that little bit kind of put them where they actually belong, belong a bit, which is cool. Maybe you want that, maybe you don't, but you can do it if you need it. And that's really what that's about. So that's just a little bit on the strings. And let's hear all this in context. Bypass. And that's cool. And that, you know, that panning stuff, like that's the ear candy for those who listen in headphones and who, or who have the nice beat. You want to give them a little, a little extra for really focusing on your stuff. So give them this wide, lush space. They'll appreciate it. Um, so those are some techniques if you have the multi-tracks, if you get everything all broken down, or if you made the beat yourself and you've got it right in front of you. Um, but we, I get a lot of stuff in that's just a two-track, that's just everything bounced and maybe a hard drive died and this is what we've got. Or maybe this is what the producer intended and they don't want you changing the levels or whatever. But you know you might need to change the levels a little bit or do something just to kind of juice it up. Well... Split EQ can do that for you too. Uh, and this is where it gets pretty wild. Um, so we'll bypass this is bypass. This is a bounce of the same beat that we're working on. Let's move forward a little bit to where we've got some synth pads and stuff. There's a little more tonal energy uh, to deal with. So this is bypass. <laughs> So 
So a lot of those elements are in there. When I printed this, I hadn't done that air on top with the strings. Uh, so as we start to bring this in now, you'll see on that high band right there up around 10K, we've got the high shelf and we're lifting that air on the tonal side. And then same thing around 5K, I'm bringing out the, the, the attack on those strings. Now, when you're working with two tracks, it's important to remember, remember if you're adjusting one thing, you're adjusting everything. So as I bring out that high end on the tonal side, I had to think, okay, that's also now bringing out some of what I took out in the hi-hats. Um, or in this case, what wasn't there in the hi-hats, if we forget that we ever had the multis, right? So, you know, you have to work within what you're given. Um, but this is really where things like the decay controls and the separation controls really come in handy. Um, as I'm adjusting the decay, now I can zone in on where the hi-hat, we have the attack of the hi-hat and the transient, where that transition is, I can zone in and fine tune that, fine -tune that. so I'm getting the air, but not boosting the parts of the hi-hats that we don't want. Um, and then down here in the low end, this is also where split EQ gets really dope, is low end management. Um, I like a lot of bass. I tend to put a lot of bass in my beats, and I know I'm not the only one. I hope some of y'all doing the same thing, because we want it to bang. We want it to rumble, but sometimes we get a little overexcited, and maybe we put a little bit too much in. But the kick has to still knock, so how do we balance that? Well, we can bring the tonal down on a low shelf and kind of subdue the longer notes of the bass, and we can compensate on the kick drum by bringing up the transient so the bang still comes through, but the rumble is just that little bit of subdued if you need that. Um, I'm gonna bypass band one, and then I'll bring it in. So again, it's subtle, and you're thinking, why would you want a less bass? You want good, solid bass. You don't need all the bass in the world if your bass is done right. Um, so we're just controlling the longer bass notes so the kick can bang like it needs to. Everything can't bang all at the same time. If not, it's madness and chaos. You got to just rein things in a little bit so other things can shine. It's a two-track. Everything's playing at once. You've only got but so much control. And then finally, here in the middle, where my snare and then the marching snare are kind of coming together around 1K. It's kind of like the little nasally part there. And then I've got strings that are hitting there. I'm just bringing down a little bit of the transient just so that's not jabbing you in your ear, but you still do have that full sound. So we'll A-B that. Right, so just enough to kind of take the little sour note out of there a little bit. Um, and then lastly, what I might do if I had a vocal with this, um, I might want to make some space for the fullness of the voice. And it's a puzzle piece, right? Something's got to give somewhere. If you want the voice full, then you have to make space in the beat. Right or the voice is boomy and parts aren't working in the beat, then you make room there. Everything needs to fit together. You can't just boost and boost and boost and boost because you run out. You run out of space. You run out of headroom. It's a real thing. So I might, in this case, take my, I'll take band three here. Let's go right here around three hundred. That's where that kind of happens, and we'll take the tonal side and we're just gonna bring that down. Right. <laughs> So 
so we're not losing the punch of the kick, the bottom of the attack of the snare. You know, a snare is a very full range instrument. It can go from like 100 hertz all the way up top, all the way up to 10K because of what it is. So you might need to poke some holes in it to make your whole thing fit together. Um, but you want the full attack. If not, you get a hand clap, not a full snare. We're not doing hand claps today. So I'm gonna make a little bit of space, but leave the attack there. And then with my decay, is it about 37%? So it's gonna ring a little bit, and then it's gonna go away. You know, if I want it shorter, I can adjust my decay, I can make the decay shorter, and then it's just more of that chop and not the full, the full ring out. But So here is the two track with the split EQ bypassed. I, I did it and I'm impressed. Like that is, it's, it's, it goes from cool beat, thanks, to oh, this sounds like a record, let me rap on it, right? And that goes a long way with your beats. The closer it sounds like to a record through the whole process, the better the song is gonna be. It's gonna be more inspiring for the artist to write to, more inspiring for the artist to sing to or rap to or perform. And then your mix is gonna be easier and the listeners are gonna love it, right? Everywhere along the whole, to the whole process, um, you have all the tools here to do what you need to do and cover all your bases and make your beats sound like records, which is the goal. So that's my breakdown of my techniques with Split EQ. I'm curious about y'all's techniques. Hop in the comments, let us know how you're using it. Uh, again, my name is Willie Green. We're in the greenhouse here. You can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at Willie Green and the number one. Um, got a lot of things going on that I'm using Split EQ on all over the place. New projects for Fielded, projects for Def C. Um, you know, I had it a little bit early so you can hear it on Arm & Hammer and the Alchemist, Haram, the album that a lot of folks are talking about this year. Uh, I'm using it on everything, you know, in real life, not just on the video. So it's a real tool, it's powerful. It's great and it does everything that you need. So again, I'm Willie Green and this is Split, e Split EQ and I'll see you next time. Peace.